this is kind of like a patch analysis for 7.08. I'm going to go down through a lot of stuff really quickly, but a lot of people are just going to focus on the visual element and the gameplay. But I'm going to try and elaborate a little bit more and go into more detail about how this will affect the community as a whole. The first most notable feature is the redesign of the player profile, where you can feature some of your cosmetics. So someone like myself who has like a decent amount of cosmetics, uh, I think that is a pretty cool feature and it brings you back to the customization that you used to have back in Source 1 before the Reborn patch. A couple of days ago Icefrog tweeted that they're going to release patches every two weeks over the next six months. This is kind of like an experiment but in order for the players to be able to keep up with the gameplay and all these patches they have now change log notifications and there's also a menu in the game where you can see the most recent gameplay updates. All of this stuff is really useful and even to keeping up to date you want to be able to keep up with esports so now they actually have the Dota Pro Circuit competitions such as uh, the major and minor system each tournament in that will have notifications on the home page which it should have been there a long time ago but it's good that it's always there now and each tournament gets featured the next thing is a feature called last hit trainer which is kind of like the old last hit tutorial that was there before reborn as well so they brought that back but one of the interesting things about this is not about the gameplay but in the menus there's empty slots so there's possibility that valve could in the future be using user generated tutorials from people who make custom games to make tutorials for them a feature like this seems like it's trying to encourage new players kind of similar to how I talked about with 7.07 .07, that Valve were trying to push new players into the game by making the game more fun or more accessible and the other thing was reducing the toxicity so people with high behavioural scores used to be being matched up with new players so that people got an overly positive experience when they played for the first time. Now it seems like Valve have now set in a no tolerance rule for toxic behavior such as walking down mid uh, like people who do it repetitively because they introduce a six month matchmaking ban this is really significant and people may not notice it on t there's no like slap on the wrist essentially and say hey go to low priority and come back you're literally said we don't want to kind of similar to how you might see in some other communities enforcing rules like this the heads up display got a number of additions too which all go towards improving the user experience one of which is the redelivering of the courier and make it so that it's easier to understand when other people's items are on the courier. Now to go down through the list of these really quick because I won't go into detail of each one. So you have icons for neutral difficulty on the mini map. You have color coded teleports. You also have team teleport status up at the top of the heads up display. You have an, an enormous amount of new alt clicking things on the heads up display you have strategy phase item pooling and improved buyback notifications the next thing i'm going to go on to is matchmaking and parties what i've noticed is that a number of these changes are trying to bring the community together and get you to play with friends even just online friends rather than constantly playing your own because it allows people to grow and stay playing the game if you have a number of small circles of friends that will play with regularly so one of the first ones is active friend filter so you can notify other people in your friends list that you want to play right now. You have a ready check to make sure that everyone in your party want, is actually not AFK and that they're there and ready to accept the match. You have a number of again going with AFK and a lot of people go AFK and PC but between the picking phase and the strategy phase you might be AFK. So now there's a bunch of window options such as flashing in the taskbar and you can force the window to come to the front as well when you're AFK or like your alt tab when a certain significant event happens in the game state. And the last thing to do with matchmaking is that there's language based matchmaking so that you can set your language and it'll have a more predominant impact on the players that you're matched with in comparison to what was there before this patch. The last part of the visual elements analysis is going to be with ability visuals. So the first one is an icon over the target that Tusk is snowballing to, but you can only see this if you're on the same team as Tusk. So it doesn't act in any other way, like in a negative way, but it allows your teammates to know who you're rolling towards and they can decide if they want to get into the snowball or not. Now there's also an improved visual accuracy for sniper sharpnel. So it allows, again, it's not really something that's going to help you as a player, but as a new player, it helps you understand where the damage of sniper sharpnel is affecting you. 
Now that I've finished up visual elements, I'm going to go on to custom games. So there was a whole revamp of the arcade tab. And the reason for this was the top 10 list was heavily favoring popular games. And it made it very hard to discover new custom games coming in. And people were really unmotivated to make new custom games because they were just not getting any highlighted or there was no nothing featuring them. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a page called Save Custom Games and it was made by a guy called Dark Lord. Valve essentially copied the direct concept and implemented it into the game, which is really good that they listen to the community as a whole. So custom games can now issue matchmaking penalties, which give you a cooldown of five minutes. And if you don't ready up a second time or if you get kicked from the match, that you can get 15 minute cooldown time. So as a whole, it prevents people from being toxic or just constantly joining and leaving lobbies the next thing which is really really significant is dedicated servers for all custom games up until maybe about a year ago valve just stopped giving out dedicated servers to custom games now that every custom game has dedicated servers it means that we have less latency so better ping and if the host leaves the match it doesn't end anymore which is really good and it allows small custom games to come up and be on equal or par level with the really big custom games the next thing which you'll probably see no one else talking about because they don't know what it is is dedicated server keys so what this is is when you send a message through the internet to a server to have like a leaderboard in a custom game what's happening is that the developer has their own server but most custom games have there's no way of checking that and validating that that message came from a valve server or did it just come from some hacker or someone just finding the ip address of the server what means that anyone can just log in and if they find the IP address of where the leaderboard is stored they can enter in any values or even delete the entire table there's pretty big security flaws with this so now with this dedicated server key and all of the custom games now are dedicated servers so you can make sure that these messages are protected that you only access things that are coming from valve directly so let's go on to gameplay and i'm going to run down through a lot of the most important points of the gameplay i'm not going to look at everything so the first one is roshan now has a 25 percent status resistance which means that debuffs like solar crest are going to last 25 percent less time meaning that it's in general a little bit harder to kill roshan next is the wards now require two constant hits to kill this is both observers and sentry wards so this means it's really good for low damage heroes like crystal maiden who typically in the early parts of the game take three hits to kill the observer wards now it also means later in the game the attack speed or having a quelling blade might be important to be able to kill the observers quicker the last general gameplay update is tier 1 tower armor aura is increased from 1 to 2 meaning that it's going to be now harder to dive if you're trying to get kills with physical damage maybe it might affect bloodseeker or lycan who like to dive towers and kill players now i'm going to go on to items now and the first big change is black king bar got a nerf it has now a fixed cooldown which also to a certain extent helps against accidental use when you have a five second cooldown but as a whole it means that you have longer times a period of like downtime between fights because you're waiting for your bkb to come back online now blink dagger and hurricane pike four staff all now got nerfed too they have longer cooldowns Aside from four staff which has the same cooldown but the time it takes to travel with the four staff is now 0.1 seconds longer. As a whole this means that heroes that rely on mobility items are nerfed as a whole. So like Slardor who really depends on jumping in and out of fights is going to be kind of like nerfed from this but it also means that heroes who have mobility already in their skill set like Quap who has her own blink or anti mages own blink benefits from this because less players are going to have the blink to keep up with you. This also means that it makes move speed and other evasive items more desirable. So we're probably going to see more variety in our item builds in comparison to constantly rushing these blink daggers and force staffs. Now the last item that I'm going to highlight is Meteor Hammer. It got a pretty significant buff. Its cooldown went from 40 seconds to 28. This is again where we might see more variety coming into play. I'm going to look down through heroes and look at the most important changes. So Alchemist got both buffs, his talents and his base attack time and chemical rage. Enchantress got minor nerfs to her base damage being reduced by 3. Line got a pretty significant buff of where his mana drain now slows the target. Which is pretty interesting because a 14% slow at the start of the game is something that really helps you get kills. 
let's go on now to the next hero, which is Lycan. So his ultimate got nerfed much longer, cooldown on his ultimate, and his base armor is reduced by one. This is probably because of the 5k plus bracket having really high win rates on this hero. Medusa got a few changes to her talents and Mystic Snake, which are both buffs and nerfs in there. But as a whole, I think she got like a minor nerf as a whole when you add it all together. So Nature's Prophet also got a buff to his ultimate in the early game because of a lower cooldown. Omni Knight's cast range got nerfed again and purification and his DJ Nora has a smaller radius as well. Now what's happening is he's becoming very dependent on extra cast range such as items like Aether Lens or Blink Dagger. And with mobility items being nerfed, it means that Omni Knight may be going completely out of this patch. Pangolier's ultimate now has longer cooldown, so that's like a nerf. Pudge's early game got nerfed with his rot, so it's really important that Pudge snowballs. So having his rot rescaled from 30% and scaling upwards, even though now on level 4 he does more rot slow, later in the game having this high percentage slow is not that useful because a lot of players have their own evasive skills leveled up already or they have items to evade themselves and sometimes even a glimmer cape can get you away from Pudge's Rot. Now then going on to Shadow Fiend, so this doesn't really affect the general Shadow Fiend player but it means that he has a weaker presence if you're a really good Shadow Fiend player in the laning stage in the first 5 minutes. So Necromancery's souls are now reduced on the earlier levels and it doesn't have any effect to his effect in the mid and late game but just the really early parts of the game and then the last off is wind ranger she got like all buffs i hope you like this video i have a interesting video coming up this weekend with esl and the whole fiasco with facebook so make sure you subscribe and if you have subscribed already hit the bell button